Good day, everyone. Uh, I'm Dennis Condi. I'm from Smart Parking today. Uh, today we're going to be talking about uh, immobilization devices. This will interest people in the parking industry, the municipal uh, parking enforcement, uh, bylaw services, uh, parking warden services throughout the world. Uh, use immobilization devices to get the attention of uh, extreme, I always call them extreme offenders. These are people that have uh, have gone onto a parking lot, have not paid, uh, have not displayed, haven't paid in some way to be on a, on someone's private property, and the private property owners and city and municipalities uh, have the right and privilege to immobilize that vehicle to do the following: they can to do it for identification of the individual, uh, to give a verbal warning, uh, to trespass the individual, to charge them a fee to have the device released for this infraction and this oversight on their part. And also in some cases, cities use this for their scoff law, which is a listing of people who are multiple offenders and have multiple tickets on record. A vehicle has been located through either through a license plate recognition system or through general officer observation, uh, or through a hot list program, uh, through the scoff law process. This uh, gives them the authority to uh, do immobilization. Immobilization is done by three different types of devices today I'm going to be talking about, uh, but they all get the same thing. They get the attention of the individual. They all start with a sticker on the driver's side windshield, which gives them warning or caution. Your vehicle has been immobilized. There's a mobilization device on one of your wheels. Uh, in some cases, some uh, companies put two devices on wheels, front and back. Uh, these people are generally have had a lot of problems and there's a caution on them. Uh, so what this does is it now gives them the, the right and privilege to now apply a device. So in some cases, uh, the device is very obscure and can't be seen uh, because it's a soft approach. So first I'll be talking about the tire tag, uh, get, using their little nifty bag that I got at a trade show from them. Uh, I have an association with them. I, I wrote their uh, management software for them through uh, Smart Parking, which we write software for parking management companies. So the tire tag is basically a Harley Davidson lock. It's hardened. It's very difficult to cut off, even with uh, even with a, a bolt cutters. You have to have a very sizable or electronic or gas powered uh, device to cut these off. But this is not meant for that person with the skill saw in the back of his truck with a cutoff blade. Uh, this is meant for a soft approach in a downtown parking lot where you don't want to publicly shame or embarrass people, so you put this on. They call it, the tire tag calls it the soft approach to parking enforcement. And this means that the, the tire tag is, is wrapped around their wheel in some fashion so that it immobilizes the vehicle. It does uh, qualify for some of the states, like California, they have an immobilization rule, or the old-fashioned boot, which we'll talk about shortly, uh, is outlawed, and you can't use it there. Because uh, if there's a wildfire, earthquake, or some kind of national emergency or emergency immediately that they have to uh, depart an area, uh, the, uh, the vehicle must be able to be uh, released or be able to drive it, uh, maybe adhered, this, this around your wheel, driving with your wheel in your vehicle, uh, getting away from a fire. You won't be able to get away at 100 miles an hour, but you will be able to get away at 50 miles an hour. You can go on their website and see tests of, of it on the wheel. Uh, how, it, how it functions. It does destroy the rim. It does maybe even destroy the fender, but the individuals can get away safely. And that's the intention of this. This is the soft approach. And they have an online site where you go online, you pay your fines, you pay your fees, and you self-release. And this is a big thing about today's devices, self-release. It saves time, it saves money, it saves confrontation, it saves violence. Uh, while officers face and parking officers face a large amount of violence uh, when they come to release these devices and I'll tell you a story about my experience 15 years ago with the boot uh, where I faced some of that. Uh, this here is I call this soft approach. So the medium approach uh, and you can carry by, by the way your bylaw officers can carry 150 to 200 of these in the truck so you're not going back to the office or having to go replenish on a regular basis. These are returned into a drop box just like a big mailbox on site so they're safe and secure and the the, uh, the the offender has to return it there's a deposit taken on this so if they don't return it as they promised uh, the uh, 
The credit card is then charged that, that holding fee and the cost of uh, cost recovery of the lock is can, taken care of. And the person is now put on a watch list for tow instead of return to the box. And, and that's going to be, that's going to be a good topic here. So we have the barnacle is my second device. Uh, these guys are really good partners. I met them a couple of years ago. Uh, to me, this is, this is the secondary best device you can use. A, it's, it, it's big, but it's not that heavy. I think it weighs about, let's say 10 pounds. So female officers, smaller males will be able to utilize this very quickly. And the nice thing is they don't, again, they don't have to come back. So Barnacle does the same thing, stick around the window with all the information on how to get it released, plus they repeat that on the front of the Barnacle. And once you go on the website, you pay your fines and fractions and your release fee, you punch in your code, it releases. And again, you take this, it's self-service again. So going back, we're still staying on that self-service model. You take this, you have to go return it to a return station, which is identified on the app. Uh, and it, there's a map, brings you right to where it is. It's usually within the property. And you return it. And then you pay your fees. So this is option number two. And this is really good because, again, in a pickup truck, I can carry about 25 to 30 of these at a time. So if I'm on a route, I'm usually going back to a property at least twice a day uh, or an area twice a day because if there's an offender once in a day, there's a, there's a second offender for sure. So the officers then go there. Uh, and here's my point about these things. So now you've paid a, we've got your license plate number. We got your make and model your vehicle. We have pictures of you on the app where that you're located there. So some kids have, some kids have vandalized these things. Remember, you vandalize any of these devices, you are now uh, des destroying private property. Uh, there's in most states and in every province in Canada and in some of the provinces in Mexico, not many, uh, they have a rule where a towing vehicle or a parking officer, once he takes possession of your vehicle through a mobilization device or through his tow vehicle, as soon as we put our device on it, we own it. So. And then you have to pay to get it released and returned back to you. So that's one of the things. And there's many things. That, yes, I know there's going to be lots of people saying, oh, you know, there's lots of other rules. And yes, 50 states, 50 different rules. Nine provinces, nine, nine different rules. You know, Mexico, lots of provinces, lots of different rules. And the way you do business is very different. So uh, my last one is the hard approach. The hard approach, and it's the oldest one. I've been applying these things now. Uh, for over 20 years myself, I am a I am a city of Ottawa and Canada's parking enforcement off street parking enforcement company, uh, which means I get a 50 50 private public partnership agreement with them where their tickets are $75 each. I get $37.50 from the ticket for every successful ticket paid. I get a share of that. I recommend a lot of cities and a lot of places go with that model uh, and have penalties for uh, misuse and you'll find that you're going to save a lot of money. Uh, because really, let's face it, private industry can do anything more efficiently than government. Sorry, government people, don't mean to get you riled up there. So this is the boot. The boot weighs about 35 to 45 pounds, depending on which model you have. It has a large clamp on it. There are knockoffs of this from China that you can buy. They're about probably 15 to 20 pounds. Uh, you, can knock, you can knock the lock off of every single one of them with a hammer. So I would recommend... Be careful when you're spending your money. Sure, you have to spend twice as much to get the real deals, but make sure you go with the real deals. Uh, in most cases, under the deals that Tire Tag and uh, uh, the Barnacle are using, they're going with uh, profit sharing. So they, they just take a, a piece of the profit. So if you meet your numbers, if you get enough tickets, uh, sorry, apply enough Barnacles in a, in a month, uh, your, all your product is free and they'll service it for free as long as you continue to launch the product on a daily basis as per your agreement. This is the boot. The boot is, now that the boot is the, is the most common name. It's like like a skidoo here in Canada. We call a skidoo a snowmobile. It's a snowmobile. Well, this is an immobilization device that caught, got the name the boot. You see this very frequently on Parking Wars. If you ever watched that show, it's quite funny to me actually. Uh, so this the problem with this one here right now is is just on a big it's a big lock with a key and you have to unlock it you can see i'm i'm not that weak this is a big unit to, to move around so the disadvantage of this is 
smaller officers have a hard time maneuvering it because you got to take it, you got to go down on your knees, you got to put it around, you got to release it, you got to slide it onto a wheel. This goes in the back, this goes in the front. You can see there's padding here. So that's to not harm the rim. And that's another topic I'll talk about is damage. So I would never recommend to install this on a Lamborghini, on a BMW with $5,000 rims on them because it's most likely going to scratch the rim. It's going to scratch the rim on the inside or the outside, absolutely on the inside. And some people take great pride even on the inside of their vehicles, on the cleanliness and the non-scratch. So this, this could lead to some damage uh, problems later on. I would recommend this to be put onto pickup trucks, older vehicles that don't have nice rims. Uh, be very careful. And on the, you know, the, the Homer Simpson, Simpson uh, issue where uh, he got booted and he drove away and wrecked his whole car, but hey, he got away. So there are people like that. I have stories. I've, this one here, actually, uh, it's been repainted, but this one here has actually had a blowtorch on it. A guy was actually trying to cut it off uh, before he was caught uh, trying to cut it off, and uh, it survived. So I've had sledgehammers on this. If you look at the marks on this unit, this is a live actual unit, and I've installed this. So what, the, what does these things do? So... We talked about self-release. Self-release is very important because it reduces interaction with the officers. So the applicators no longer have to see the individuals because in the cases of the tire tag, they're going online and getting a, and getting a release code. Article, going online, getting a release code. These here, most cases, they don't have a combination lock on them nor do they have a software because it's old fashioned guys doing lock and key. We do have a, con I have a conversion kit for this. If anyone's interested in getting a conversion kit and a website up, I'm happy to talk to you about a, uh, uh, a profit sharing process where I'll provide the software and I'll provide the locking kits and the whole mechanisms to uh, do self-release programs. So I can take your old fleet of the boot and I can upgrade it into a modern self-release process if you're interested. So I have experience with all of these. I've been dealing with the tire tag now for over a year and a half. I've been dealing with uh, the uh, tire tag, sorry, the barnacle for, uh, for a little over a year and a half, the tire tag now for about a year. So between all of these things, I have some really good experience and I have some really good application stories. Uh, if anyone's interested in them, I know the pitfalls, the, the, the benefits, the strong points. And as I said, it, I always recommend, I have multiple devices to handle different situations. So I go with the soft approach. You know, I've got the station wagon or the minivan in my parking lot in a park and pay. They didn't pay. Uh, they just ran out. The, the old story, I was just out for five minutes. I thought I would be okay. I didn't think I have to pay for five minutes. Yes, you have to pay for five minutes. You're on private property. There's a condition to you entering onto any pro private property, like a shopping mall and everything. So one of, one of our uh, clients uses uh, soft approaches in regards to uh, shopping plazas. So in the shopping plaza situation where you're trying to get all the people who are parking and riding or the businesses uh, parking on your shopping plaza and walking across the street to go to their office building every day, tire tag's a great thing for that. It's a nice soft approach. It's a neighborly thing to do. You're identifying the individuals. You're educating them. In some cases, if you have some spaces you want to rent out in the back parking lot, that's a good opportunity for you to reach out to them and speak to them. So that's the three devices today. Uh, if anyone has any questions or want to discuss it a little bit more, I'm more than happy to discuss the tire tag, the barnacle, or the different types of boots. Remember, you get what you pay for in regards to mechanical boots. So, you know, if your boot is sitting on the ground because you went out and bought the Chinese version from a hardware store or from online stores, don't expect it to be there. I have never heard a good story from the cheapy guys, okay? As we all know, cheap is cheap. So thank you very much. I'd like to uh, thank you for going through my immobilization uh, introduction, and I look forward to speaking to you again shortly. Uh, I'm always open to questions, ideas, new business ideas. So please, uh, during, this, uh, during this time, I'm always welcome to new ideas. So at this time, I'd like to say, uh, stay safe, stay healthy, I look forward to seeing you on the other end. Cheers.